Right guys, for all of you who have been watching these videos of my uh, increasing levels of failure, uh, thank you for watching, thank you for your suggestions. Um, and one that I managed to come up with all by myself was to try and restrict the flow that's going through this steering rack. Now from what I'm told, this is a Freelander steering rack requires less flow than the, the the pump is designed to put out and um, the theory is, is has been or the question is is the pump seeing sufficient back pressure to be able to uh, sense that it's come up to the correct pressure and then come back down again so that's what I don't know so to try and uh, replicate the uh, the extra pressure required for the power steering rack that this was designed for I have put a set of vice grips you can just about see them there I'll try and zoom in a set of vice grips are clamping the uh, return pipe at a point where it goes flat anyway so it's not going to be doing any harm to the pipe and the clamps the the uh, vice grips are not particularly tight just enough to restrict the flow somewhat don't know if it's going to work but I'm going to try it anyway so we have the main uh, heavy wires 12 volt wires are connected and we've got the two wires which are uh, one normally goes to the ignition and one normally goes to the alternator the ignition wire would obviously give you voltage to the pump the moment you turn the ignition on and then the alternator uh, connection um, then tells the pump to, to start up but I presume or I believe that the ignition wire is like a, a prelude to that and sort of uh, starts the procedure so we're going to try and do it the way that it's meant to be done uh, although I can't remember which one's which so we'll just have to, to, to wing it here so we'll start off with connecting the black wire which in my case is brown we'll connect that first to 12 volts and just over here okay that should be on and now that's on we're not going to connect the uh, what color is it blue and white wire now this is the first time I've done this since reconnecting the pump and putting fluid into it and so on so this could all end in tears again We'll try it and see what happens. You're watching it for the first time too. Okay. That went up to 40 odd amps, but it's coming back down again, which is interesting. I'm not sure that that's correct actually. DC amps. Mm, 49 amps. Seems to be. I'll try to turn the wheel and see what happens. DC 45 amps. I'm going to have to put this battery on the charger. 45 amps seems a bit high to me. Let's see what happens when I take this off. Alright. Hi guys, and welcome back to the asylum. Uh, welcome back to the ongoing saga which is my Freelander power steering pump. So what I've done is I've gone back to an old uh, favourite of mine which is a car alternator which has been adapted to become a, a motor, a three phase motor. And the way that was done was to remove all of the electronic components from the uh, the back of the alternator and just take out the three phase wires 
uh, that you can see here. These are the three phase wires. And put them, connect them directly to uh, an e-bike motor controller. This is just a, a cheap e-bike motor controller. You can buy these off eBay. Uh, very cheap, 20, 30 pounds, something like that. So that's what that is. It's a 36 volt, 800 watt e-bike controller. Uh, so what I've, done, I've also got is I've got a 36 volt battery from an e-bike and the whole, this whole thing is in, as you can see, belt driven to my Freelander um, power steering pump. This is the original pump off the Freelander engine. Engine is still sitting there. I haven't taken it, haven't uh, sold it off yet. Uh, the pump was originally driven by the crank and as far as I could see, the crank pulley on uh, uh, the crank pulley on the en on the engine is approximately the same size as the crank pulley here. So, oh, sorry, the, the pulley on the um, the power steering pump. So, that is the Freelander should have been ticking over around about eight hundred RPM, and at, at that RPM, then this gives you enough power to turn the steering. So. My theory is that I should be driving the pump at around about 800 RPM and this motor should be able to do that. Um, I, like I said, I used this on a, an, an e-bike. It was one of the first e-bikes I built and I got this connected up to it and it worked very well. So the only thing it is, the only, thing, the only issue with uh, using an alternator as a motor is that the rotor inside has brushes going to it and you need to put a voltage to those brushes now the way i'm putting the voltage to the brushes is just using uh, a dc motor controller which i think is something like five or six hundred watts or something i can't remember the the um the power output of the motor controller but basically the way it operates is you turn this knob and depending on where you turn that knob, you get a percentage of the original voltage. You can see there it says 17%. So you're getting 17% of the voltage of the battery, which is 36 volts. So you're getting approximately five or six volts going to the motor, to the, um, the brushes on the rotor. So that's how that works. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's all very, this is just a, a, an e-bike throttle. Uh, connected up. It's all just hashed together just with uh, very rough wiring just to get it um, just to get it tested. So what will happen if I turn this throttle? Well let's show you. It spins! As you can see if I Turn it up and down, I can adjust the, the, the speed. I have no idea what sort of RPM that is, but it looks fairly fast to me. Anyway, I don't want to um, do any harm to the motor by driving it without, or the, the pump by driving it without fluid in it. So, next step is to get this whole shebang into the car to replace this one thing. And then we'll see what happens. But the nice thing about this is, this is the original power steering pump from the Freelander. Don't worry about this, it's just a, a, a pipe I connected in there to stop anything from going into it. This is the original pump from the Freelander, so I know it's a good one. Uh, this motor, alternator motor, is the one that I've used several times before, so I know it's okay. Um, so it's just a matter of connecting it up and seeing what happens. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get power steering. Anyway, I shall uh, get it all plugged into the car and come back and show you what the outcome is. Right guys, well as you can see I have it all plumbed in again. Um, I have the header tank for the power steering back in its original position. Uh, the pump is probably not far from where it, where it would have been originally. Obviously it would have been sideways on uh, to the rather than sitting where it is at the minute 
it's just sitting like that for convenience of setting it on this piece on this stool. Um, as you can see, looking at the ammeter there, it's currently drawing half an amp, and that's probably mostly the parasitic loss going to the the uh, motor. So uh, it's like I said before, it's about five volts, five six volts, probably an amp or something like that. Um, it's currently being drawn by that motor uh, when it's not even doing anything. That's one of the issues with using a, an alternator as a motor is that there's always a, draw, a drain uh, unless you have some way of turning it off. So that would all have to be sorted out. Uh, but the good news is it's working. Uh, I, I've got the throttle here, as you can see. Uh, if I turn that, we're pumping. And currently drawing uh, three and a half, four volts, something sort of ramp, something like that. So what I'm going to do is get that up to about four, which seems to be about right. Uh, leave it about there. It's currently drawing about 4 amps at 36 volts, uh, which is still no small amount. We could probably get it to draw a bit less than that. But now that I have it, I have to wait for about 5 or 6 seconds with the throttle in the one position for that to, to lock. And as you can see, we have power steering. Nothing wrong with that at all. There you go. Now what I'll do is I'll put this on, put you onto a stand and zoom you in so we can see just exactly how much current is being drawn when I turn the steering wheel. Stay there. Is that is it working? How cool is that? It's a bit bulky, it's a bit awkward. It's going to take a little bit of um, positioning, but all of that's doable. It's just a matter of getting it done. It'd be interesting to see if it would work at two amps. Right, there's three amps. Let's keep it there. Hold it for a few seconds. Right. Is it still working? Oh yeah. Not much wrong with that. It may even be possible to get that down to a lower current. Um, these alternator motors are very inefficient. So if I could get a more efficient motor to drive this, I could have this down to two amps or less. So I think we have a solution, whether it's the solution is another matter, but it's a solution to the problem. And it's, it's a lot quieter than the other one too. A lot of that noise at the motor. And I could get a quieter motor, maybe even a DC motor, 12 volt DC motor, to do the same thing. This was just for testing purposes and it seems to be working. So we have a success. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.